Welcome. Thanks for joining. So there we have it again. The U.S. recently reached its debt limit, the maximum amount of money it can legally borrow. This is now $31.5 trillion. The government currently cannot borrow anything beyond that. The Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen, is warning of a default if a new limit is not set soon. This situation has happened many times before as we can see in this chart, but the debt and its interest payments increase exponentially. That will make it more and more difficult each time. According to statistics, a debt-to-GDP ratio of 60% or higher is generally considered high, and a ratio that exceeds 90% could indicate that a country is in danger of becoming unable to meet its debt obligations. The debt-to-GDP ratio of the United States has sharply risen over the last year with a huge move up as a result of the health crisis. With a current debt-to-GDP ratio of around 130%, the U.S. is now the number 12 of those countries with the highest debt-to-GDP. Many more governments are currently at risk of defaulting on their debts. In fact, there might be a tsunami of defaults coming as a result of the actions taken the last couple of years, pushing millions if not billions of people into poverty. This shows how much the people in power care for the health and well-being of the people. Need to keep that in mind next time. Anyways, the problem with high government debts is that the interest to pay for that debt is growing exponentially with the amount of debt taken out. So let's check for the United States. The current debt is $31.42 trillion US dollars. That is a number with 12 zeros. If we use 34 trillion paper sheets, the height of the tower would be approximately 340,000 kilometers, which is much taller than the distance from the Earth to the Moon. If we now look onto the interest payments for that debt, according to this, the United States has spent a total of $724 billion for its public debt in 2022. But interest rates are now three times higher than before. This probably will have a significant effect on the debt payments, but it will take a bit of time, because all the issued debt has different maturity dates. But I guess we can agree that it is certainly not becoming less of a burden going forward, and the question is will it just double or triple or be even more? So this is the expenditure side of the United States balance sheet. How are we doing with income now? According to this site, the expected revenue from tax income for the United States for 2023 is $4.71 trillion. This means that the interest payments alone are amounting to 15.3% of the total tax revenue. That doesn't sound too bad, but if we compare that to other things the government is spending money on, then it becomes clear that this is quite a large number actually. As an example, the U.S. currently spends $752 billion on military spending. So this means that the interest payments for the debt taken out is already very close to the amount that the government spends for its military and the United States have by far the largest military in the world. Social Security is $2.8 trillion and Medicare and Health is $1.61 trillion U.S. dollars. These are large numbers. I have troubles understanding for what that money is actually spent, as I would think that the health care system is particular caring for the citizens. But it certainly is the most expensive one in the world. Let's continue the comparison. So for education, the government spends only $439 billion, this is already less than they have to spend for the interest on the debt. So governments make their money from taxes and fees, which should be used for things like roads, schools, and public services. However, as we can see, much of this money is spent on military spending, interest for the already taken on debt, and for funding an insanely high and ineffective health and social security system. Moving on to the economic side of things, when a country's economy is struggling, interest rates on shorter-term bonds are higher than on longer-term bonds. This is called a yield curve inversion, and it is associated with a recession. The yield curve is currently the most inverted it has been in over 40 years. Usually in free market capitalism, these rates should be set by the buying and selling of bonds by the market participants, such as individuals and institutions. But now this now primarily managed centrally by the central banks. Central banks can influence the interest rates by hiking or cutting the rates, but they can also directly buy government bonds to keep rates low, which is called monetary financing. That is what usually all these banana republics have done. Nobody buys their debt, so they print the money themselves to buy the debt, leading to a constantly increasing inflation due to the excessive amount of money printing, and as a result even less trust into their debt and currency. But that just to be mentioned on the side. Most countries in the world have a lot of debt that they can't pay back. This means that if they let interest rates go up, they won't be able to pay the money and interest they owe to bondholders, which would lead to a default. A default doesn't happen suddenly, but over time as the government gives more of its money from taxes and fees to bondholders, leaving less money for public infrastructure and services for their citizens like education. 
This leads to a struggling economy and over time develops into a vicious cycle. Because a struggling economy means less tax revenue, leading the government to run more deficits, to borrow more money, and as a result, having to cut more benefits to the people it serves. If a central bank buys the debt of the country by money printing, this weakens the country's currency. This is happening in Japan, where their debt is more than double the size of their economy. If the Bank of Japan would allow interest rates to rise, then Japan would immediately default on its debt. So they have to keep buying bonds to keep interest rates low and to allow the government to still issue more debt, keeping it functioning. But as a result, value of the yen going down, coming back to the United States, a debt default would be severe for the U.S. as the U.S. dollar is the world's reserve currency and U.S. bonds are strangely seen as a safe asset for investors. Such a default would have a devastating and cascading effect on all other financial assets like U.S. corporate debt, stocks, and real estate. It would completely undermine the trust that is placed in the U.S. as the safest issuer of debt and the U.S. dollar as a reserve currency. Janet Yellen says that the government only has enough money to make it until June. After that, the government will be forced to pause spending on important things like public infrastructure and servants or its military personnel. The reason the debt ceiling limit is causing a problem now is because Republicans and Democrats can't agree on how to raise it. Republicans want the government to spend less money, while Democrats want to continue spending more. The recent U.S. midterm elections have given Republicans more power to block the debt ceiling raise, but it is anyway just hot promises. So far, no matter which party was in power, they all have always spent more than the previous administration, taking on increasing amounts of debt as a result. This kind of disagreement has also happened many times before, and it is part of the show that makes us believe in our government. But intentionally or unintentionally, this blockade can cause a lot of problems. In 2011, it took politicians months to agree to raise the debt ceiling, and in the end, the stock market crashed 17%, and the U.S. government debt was downgraded for the first time ever. Today, the situation is even worse because the U.S. has a lot more debt and expenses, and political polarization is at an all-time high. It will be hard for politicians to agree on a solution, and the government may run out of money even sooner than June. This is because interest rates are going up and other countries are selling U.S. bonds as they are broke too, which will make it harder for the U.S. to find new buyers for its new debt. This leaves China as potential option, but China is not likely to accumulate U.S. bonds in an emergency situation. China often requires physical infrastructure as collateral for their loans, which gives them leverage over countries and in the light of all the ongoing political tensions, it is unlikely that an agreeable deal with China would emerge. So this leaves the Federal Reserve as the lender of last resort, meaning the Federal Reserve would have to print the money to buy the U.S. government debt. This would be in complete contrary to the current objectives of economic tightening and interest rate rises. The Federal Reserve would be forced to abandon its fight against inflation. As a result, such scenario would have a devastating effect on the U.S. dollar, which would get one of the biggest hits in history. Inflation would certainly skyrocket with that destruction, the loss in confidence and the money printer in turbo mode. But the people would be hit the hardest, such a scenario with a crashing dollar could cut their purchasing power in half again. The question is, how likely is this to happen? Under normal circumstances, this should not happen. Politicians, if they would work for the people would resolve the situation before it escalates. But with everything that is going on in the world, with all the strange agendas, it might be that exactly that kind of chaotic situation is that benefits the rollout of whatever solution or agenda will be proposed as a result. The World Economic Forum and many others are always communicating like here, that the United States will no longer be the superpower in the world. It is still a bit of time until 2030 but certain people seem not to see any problems with the United States losing its current place in the world so it is a possibility that a debt default might be actually the desired triggering event for this outcome. But if it is not happening now, then maybe the next time. Most likely in two years at the latest there will be the same problem again. For investors and citizens I would therefore advise to keep this as a black swan risk in mind and to prepare for such a potential outcome. This means leaving not too much money in the bank, holding physical assets, assets in other countries and currencies as well as being location independent in case complete mayhem breaks loose. One thing is for sure, the future is uncertain, but it is likely to be more chaotic than less. With this I will end this for today. Hope this information was helpful to you. Thank you very much for watching and all the best.